If you want to get a Tesla today, you are literally being put on a waiting list for 3 to 10 months in average, while Elon Musk's electric car company already finished building their two new massive gigafactories in Texas and Germany, shortage in batteries is still causing Tesla and its customers a lot of pain. Maybe that's why Tesla's battery suppliers are pushing the limits. For instance, contemporary Amperex Technology Limited Company of China is riding a surge in demand for electric vehicles. This is fueled by China's strategic push into EVs as governments try to decrease carbon emissions and customers adopt greener automobiles. The business, which went public back in 2018, controls more than 30% of the worldwide EV battery market. Cadel has been considering building a battery facility in the United States for several years now. Although some escalating geopolitical tensions between the United States and China have been hindering the project, but now the company is under pressure to make a decision quickly as competitors, including Samsung, LG and Panasonic, sign agreements with automakers to establish battery operations in the United States. The trade agreement, signed by then-President Donald Trump, added complexity to Cato's ambitions by establishing higher wage requirements for light automobiles to trade duty-free and more demanding content standards. But things have changed in the last few years. As the world's largest manufacturer of electric car batteries, Cato is now evaluating at least two sites in Mexico for a manufacturing factory that might supply Tesla and Ford. The company has taken an interest in Ciudad Juarez in Chihuahua and Saltillo de Coahuila. Both towns are close to the Texas state line. Now that the location search is over, Cadel is considering investing up to $5 billion in the project. Ciudad Juarez is appealing partly because it is adjacent to the port of entry into the United States of New Mexico at San Geronimo, Santa Teresa. This would give a path around Texas's border crossings, which is home to Tesla's new manufacturing facility, but which has been recently implementing steps that have been hindering shipments and admissions into the United States. Cadel is also contemplating dividing its investments into two sites, the first one in the United States and the second in Mexico. A final decision has not yet been taken, and the entire magnitude of the acquisition is subject to change. According to some latest reports, the money may be used to build an 80 gigaton hour facility. A CATL facility would assist Mexico, which has long been an essential element in the auto industry's supply chain, in solidifying its place in the region's electric car manufacturing. CATL may choose to produce battery cells in Mexico and send them back to Kentucky for assembly into battery packs. According to the records, the Chinese battery giant acquired a former R.R. Donnelly & Sons printing mill in Glasgow, Kentucky in 2020 and established a subsidiary there. Then it recruited Charles Wang, a manufacturing expert, to be the project's chief executive officer in April 2021. His job is to create corporate structure and strategy for the Cato manufacturing project in North America. Cato's ambitions in Kentucky were not discussed further by a spokesperson for Kentucky's Economic Development Agency. An increased presence in North America may unnerve U.S. policymakers eager to encourage local producers. President Joe Biden is devoting billions of dollars into fostering of the United States battery supply chain and wean the car sector off its dependence on China. Still, it will take years for such efforts to bear fruit via American businesses and collaborations with Korean or Japanese corporations. And obviously, this will help out Tesla too. Cato isn't the only company that has found a new location. Panasonic also intends to develop a new battery facility in Kansas to make high-capacity cells for Tesla. The decision comes after Tesla's CEO Elon Musk said that the EV company had been having difficulties scaling up manufacturing of its in-house batteries, leading to limiting car output. He called Tesla's new facilities in Texas and Berlin gigantic money furnaces that are losing billions of dollars. 
The Panasonic factory will essentially provide batteries to Tesla, creating job opportunities in that locality as well. Although the Kansas authorities said that the announced job creation and investment plans were subject to final approval by Panasonic's board, the factory, which will be constructed near DeSoto on the western outskirts of Kansas City, is essential to the company's attempts to scale up production for electric cars as it seeks to improve battery capacity and performance. The company already has a Nevada plant that supplies Tesla, but with this new facility, Panasonic intends to triple or quadruple battery manufacturing capacity by 2029, with most of the expansion happening in North America. So far, Elon Musk's electric vehicle company has depended mainly on Panasonic and Chinese suppliers such as Ketel for battery cells that go into their automobiles, high-voltage battery packs, and the company's energy storage systems for household, commercial, and grid-scale installations. However, Tesla's also been working on inventing and commercializing its own 4680 battery cells. It bought some Canadian battery manufacturing businesses, such as Hybar Systems, to achieve this goal. Tesla has consistently indicated that it will switch the battery cell chemistry used in all of its standard range cars to lithium iron phosphate cells instead of nickel cobalt aluminum cells, which Tesla expected to remain utilized in its longer range vehicles. It will also interest you to know that Panasonic is not alone in increasing its investments in battery manufacturing in the United States. General Motors and LG Energy announced plans to spend more than $2 billion on a new battery facility in Michigan in January of this year. In addition, Jeep manufacturers Stellantis and Samsung are spending around $2.5 billion on a battery factory in Kokomo, Indiana, to assist the automaker's shift to electric cars. As EV trends and many legacy automakers and startups worldwide pursue electric vehicles, it's not unusual for them to turn to Tesla for guidance on what works and what to avoid. At its Battery Day event, Tesla announced a few years ago that it would introduce a new and innovative battery cell that would be larger and more energy dense than current cells. Much more recently, the U.S. electric automaker began using the cells in Model Y crossovers produced at its new Texas factory. Meanwhile, other battery manufacturers are preparing to manufacture Tesla's cells too. For instance, 3Mac would follow the format of Tesla's 4680 battery cells. Tesla's 4680 battery cells have a diameter of 46 mm and a height of 80 mm. 3Mac is working on battery technology based on 46 mm cylindrical cells. However, it seems that the Croatian manufacturer will test different cell heights. Remac Technologies Director of Research and Advanced Engineering said that the car maker expects to increase battery pack output significantly with objectives of 40,000 packs in 2023 and 200,000 packs by 2028. Remac is negotiating with three other battery manufacturers to build cells for the new pack architecture. The new module platform will be the foundation for most of Remax's future applications. The business has revealed that it would provide battery packs for the Aston Martin Valkyrie with Koenigsegg, a Swedish manufacturer of high-end supercars. Remax also working on structural battery packs, another component of Tesla's forthcoming Model Y crossover. Remax's goal, according to the company's representative, is to thin down the battery pack itself, independent of the cells. The objective is for the cells to account for 75% of the overall battery pack weight. Remax plans to introduce this new structural pack with 46 mm cells by 2025. Moreover, the Porsche Taycan's battery pack has 63% cells the Tesla Model 3's 64% and the Remac Nevera's 67%. The higher the percentage Remac can achieve, the less unnecessary weight the electric car would have, which will be a win-win for everyone. Remac's 2023 objective of producing 40,000 battery packs will be increased to 200,000 by 2028. Remac's battery production costs should be reduced for the 4680 batteries as well. Furthermore, 
the decreased cost will be passed on to the customers soon. If you are wondering what the hype is for Tesla's 4680 batteries, in almost every manner, the new tabless 4680 cells are fundamentally better than cells with tabs, even though they are bigger. Removing the tab allows electrons to move more freely within the cell than in the former 2170 cells. Mosh explained, In a huge tabless cell, you really have a lower root length than in a smaller cell with tabs. The other cells are not the product of a single change in cell size. The 4680 cells, like the multiple rewrites of Tesla's autopilot throughout the years, constitute a fundamental rewriting of Tesla's battery cell history. Silicon is utilized in Tesla batteries today, but its physical qualities make it difficult to employ in larger quantities. The only challenge with silicon is that it grows four times when charged with lithium. Because silicon is the second most common element in the Earth's crust after oxygen, it is a low-cost and easy-to-obtain commodity. To work around the rough edges of silicon, Tesla somewhat predictably began with raw silicon. That immediately decreases the cost, and Tesla just developed a new chemical to complement it. This is significantly less complicated than existing techniques and enables a more significant proportion of silicon to be utilized in the cells. Consequently, the cell is less expensive while simultaneously having a bigger capacity. Isn't Tesla truly the king of EVs and batteries? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next videos.